All right, hey guys, this is HardwareHobbyist.com. I'm Max. And this is Bill. And this video is going to be uh, the fifth in the series of unboxing for our custom PC building guide. Um, and this will cover the motherboard. So this is the EVGA X58. Um, they don't really have a specific name for it like other companies, but uh, I believe you can refer to it as the E758. Um, but this was the first X58 motherboard that EVGA released, and we got it recertified now in New Age for a very cheap price. And um, it suits our needs perfectly because it is cheap. We're not worried about uh, warranties that much because it is a PC for um, this guy specifically. So. Because it's recertified, it comes with the I.O. backplate only. That's the only accessory you're going to get. And um, this piece is very important because it grounds the motherboard to your case by connecting the back panel, um, connecting all that metal to the case electrically. So you're not going to get any uh, static discharge, which will, um, which might destroy uh, parts on the motherboard. Uh -huh. So moving on to uh, the back of the motherboard. Just take a quick look at um, what it comes with. So this is your standard um, Dolby, I'm guessing, audio, um, 7.1. Uh, you have two gigabit Ethernet connectors, which is really good if you run some sort of a LAN server, etc. Um, what's cool is that it comes with eight USB ports. So there's four here, there's two and then two more on top. Mm -hmm. You're definitely not going to run out of USB ports. And um, if even, you could probably get an extension somewhere as well for more. Um, here you have your Firewire, your eSATA, um, here's your SPDIF cable for um, HD audio, and here's your optical audio output. Um, PS2 um, for a keyboard, which is nice because um, when you're overclocking, a lot of times when you're um, messing with your south bridge, kind of the frequencies, um, your USB controller can get messed up, so it's always good to have a PS2 um, port for any sort of uh, keyboard in case your overclock goes wrong. Um, here's a clear CMOS. Yeah. Button it's kind of small, but um, this is good if you again if your overclock's unstable or something. You just want to clear your BIOS settings. Um, really nice for EVGA, EVGA to just have it on the back of your case. Yeah, you don't have to open any case or use any pliers and change any headers. You just press a button. And there's also another one at the bottom right here, which is next to an onboard power and reset switch. So that's also nice to have because you can test um, your motherboard without actually hooking up your cases power and reset switches. Okay, something cool that EVJ gives you is um, this LED display for um, the X58 motherboard. Um, basically any sort of uh, things that go wrong, um, maybe, you know, if your things are going right, you'll obviously get a good code. Um, basically it's a two digit um, code that if you have an error, you'll be able to look it up. It's standard across all X58 motherboards. So if you do have a problem, you know, just Google it, Bing it, whatever you like, and um, you'll definitely find out what's wrong. Uh, moving on, as you can see here, there's three PCIe x16 um, 2.0 um, slots. So if you want to go try SLI, you know, you can. Um, in this case, you know, we're not, but um, you can. So here's a PCI x1 and two PCI x16 slots for any sort of uh, cards. These are old PCI slots. Yeah, you want... Um, here's the Northbridge, uh, EVJ has this cool logo, um, and a fan. We're probably going to take out the fan just because um, a lot of smaller fans spin at a super high R RPM that's kind of loud. And because we are going to be using a push-pull configuration for our CPU heatsink, um, we're probably not going to need it. And if we have to, we'll even replace the thermal compound below them for optimal temperatures. Another thing to note is that it does come with nine SATA ports. Here are two, uh, four, six. Those are right angle facing, so it's nice if you have a long graphics card, it won't obstruct them in any way. And then you have two on the bottom, and then one more that's awkwardly placed above the first PCIe slot, which is again nice because you stick your card in and it's not going to be obstructed by anything. And then you, uh, you see here we have six DIMMs for a maximum of 24 gigabytes of RAM if you have four in each slot. And um, typically when you, when you put in your memory, you want to have it on these three first, the ones that are offset to the right of the motherboard, and always go by color. Uh -huh. Definitely want them matching up. Um, here's your standard 24-pin motherboard connector, and here's your 8-pin motherboard connector for um, that extra CPU power that you're definitely going to need if you're overclocking. 
Um, here's a cool little heat and sink. And you're going to need anyway, otherwise the computer will not start. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's the CPU socket. Um, we're going to be doing a guide later on how to install a CPU. It's really easy, but... Um, Definitely don't mess around with this. Make sure you yeah. keep the cover on because if any pin gets bent, it could mean that your CPU socket will not work at all. So definitely, of course, when you're buying a motherboard... Um, I haven't done this in a while. So if you do look at the chip, of course... Be, or the, um, the socket be sure of course not to bend any pins but you always want to check to see if any pins are bent because um, that's definitely going to cause a problem with it um, working with the CPU and especially since this is recertified again we're definitely going to be stress testing it um, to the max just to make sure that nothing's wrong with it um, from the looks of it it looks pretty good so um, definitely keeping our hopes up one thing to keep in mind is that Intel will um, for Intel CPUs the pins are attached to the motherboard and they stick up from there, while AMD um, does it the opposite way and the pins are actually attached to the CPU and they um, go into the motherboard slots. So slightly reverse, just keep in mind where your pins are and make sure to always be careful with them. Uh -huh. In terms of Intel and AMD, we're going to cover that later, um, but all we can say right now is basically just do your research, um, pros and cons for both. I don't know if we mentioned this, but this is a standard ATX motherboard, so definitely going to fit in the majority of cases, and it's going to be perfect for our case. Yep, and as for um, tips on looking for the right motherboard for you, that's kind of a, a topic that's too large to cover in one video, so look for a guide um, on our site later, but as for now, I can just tell you to uh, make sure you do your research and find the correct chipset. It's good for you because the motherboard is really important. It, it'll determine the compatibility of almost every other component in your build. Yep, so, you know, for this one, we're going to be doing LGA 1366, and we're going to be using a Xeon server processor. All right, guys, so look forward to our next video, which will be uh, combined about the DVD drive and hard drive, and that will be part six. So see you guys later. See ya.